guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. I'm still here with Ian O'Dowd, who just done his greatest 11, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Now he has to do the Shelburne season review for 2020. Yeah. Um, difficult one, to be fair, Ian, for Shelburne. Obviously, they finished ninth. They lost out in the relegation promotion playoff to Longford Town. Yep. Um, you know, it was a short season. I was looking at the table earlier, and you're looking at it, and you're going, Sligo qualified for Europe. Shelburne finished seven points behind Sligo. Um you know, they had one of the, I think they had the fourth best defensive record in the league, but they scored, I think only Cork City actually scored, you know, the least amount of goals. You, I suppose Kilduff only got two goals in 17 appearances or something like that as a striker as well. So I yeah. suppose, what's your general thoughts overall of, of the season, uh, Ian? Look, you know, it, it's obviously bitterly disappointing. Nobody can, uh, can say otherwise. Um, you know, we were kind of hoping with the, um, with kind of the new owner and a you know coming up uh, from the first division, you kind of thought it was the, the start, um, the start of something great. Um, so it, it obviously was disheartening. Um, I maybe I'm just an optimist, but I I feel had we had a full season, I think if we had a full season, we didn't have the long break. I think Shells probably would have would have had enough to to stay up. Um, uh, but look, you take the season as it's dealt, and that's the same with Cork. It's the same with Finn Harps, who did an, an incredible comeback. So it, it was disappointing. Um, we're going to go again next season. Um, if anything, the first division will have uh, Shelburne, Cork, um, Galway, Bray. Um, I mean, I would probably say that this could be probably the strongest first division of I've no idea how long. Like that's that's some that's just, that's. There, there's some big club names in the first division, um. So, so that might won't be easy to come up for uh, in the first year trying. But if nothing else, it'll be entertaining. So we're just gonna keep positive. Yeah, I suppose from a neutral point of view, like you know, as you say, the first division does actually look exciting. I have to say because there's so many big teams with decent budgets. Galway have a huge budget going into the season, by the way. Absolutely um, massive, yeah. With their new owners, um, I don't know yeah. what. We don't know what's going to happen with Shells yet, who they're going to keep. I've seen Luke Byrne actually sign new contracts. Yeah, so, yeah. Ryan Brennan might be staying as well. So, you need those kind of players to stay, I suppose. Um, like, at the start of the season, though, what were your general hopes? Like, what did you what did you think Shelburne could achieve at the start of the season before a ball was kicked, basically? Well, I mean, look, I suppose, you know... I thought there would have been enough to stay up. Um, I think most people would have thought that. Um, um, it was we started well as well, which we, which which helped. You know, we got off to a flyer with the win, the the win against Cork, and then the win against Pats uh, two games later. You know, so six points out of nine. Um, what, what was a was a great start. You know, and we and we there was a real sense of uh, urgency um, in it with the play, and it, and it, and it. it it did really well because you know Shelburne had its first two home games. Um, the only home games that fans were allowed in, they were they were they were sellouts. Yeah, um, so it was um, the, the the fans were absolutely incredible, and I think the players really really fed off that. Um, so at the start of the season, you know, I really really thought we had enough to to. I was thinking seventh or eighth was kind of um, a realistic prediction. You had some people who said we should be mid table. You know, I, I don't think that that's fair. Um, you know, we're a club that had, had been in the first division six, seven years. You know, it doesn't really matter what kind of what players you have. If it's if these if it's their first time playing in the Premier, the step up is just so big. And you have these players who might have been incredible in the first division, you know, maybe finding it a, a bit difficult to even start in the Premier. And that that's just the, the level difference. So uh yeah, but look, it is what it is. The you know, the situation happens. We we had the 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 big delay, um, which I think really took a sting out of our kind of good performance, you know. But look, I and I would say, and you know, I think credit has to really be given to to Shells because they were one of only three clubs to 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 pay their players during pay their players, pay their coaching staff during the whole kind of COVID situation. Um, you know, one the other two clubs, I'm sure you can probably guess which two they were. They were the ones who were big, big, big clubs. Um, so, you know, a lot of credit has to go there. Other clubs didn't pay their players and, and you know, and, and I think that kind of helped them. Maybe maybe they were smart for doing so because that might have hurt if Shells had done the same. Maybe we would have been able to do, do something else because there was obviously other clubs that were able to, I suppose, hold 
keep the money, you know, kind of close together, you know, save it up and we're able to kind of spend a little big um, during the break. Um, so, uh, yeah, so look, it is what it is, but I definitely think credit has to go for Shelburne for for paying the players and staff during the whole situation because that can't be easy for, for any club, let alone a club, you know, the size, the size of Shelburne. So, you know, I have to say that. Sense. Actually, you touched on something there that I thought was key as well. At the start of the season, I was actually at those two games at Talca Park, the D- Pats one and the Dundalk one, actually. Yep. And, um, you know, obviously we're, we lost fans. That was a big blow in general to the league. But I just think well, with Shelburne coming up, and, you know, they were, they've were they been in the league once in the last number of years, but um, I think they went down quickly as well. But, yep. you know, they had a crowd, a serious crowd at those games. And yep. you just felt that. You're right, though. You felt like the fans... You know, the players could feed off those fans, the energy. And they did bring a great energy, actually, to the league. And you never know, if you get another two points even from that, like, you know, that makes a serious difference. And well, yeah, from exactly. Shelburne's point of view, that's a major, major disappointment for out of all the clubs, because the other clubs, some of the other clubs have been in the league for a few years. Yeah. But for Shelburne, it was an even bigger disappointment. And you were definitely deprived of having to go and watch your team nearly every week as well, which is a killer, regardless if you stayed up or went down, actually. Yep. I think it's, it's the, the thing that kind of hurts the most, particularly for me, and um, maybe other fans will agree, is it's it's been a long, long time trying to get back to the Premier Division. And when we finally do get back to the Premier Division, we only get like four or five games in, the season stopped, it's cut in half, and then when it's resumed, fans aren't allowed. And then we're subsequently in the situation where we're back down. So for so long wanting to get back, for so long wanting to go to the big games, your your Talas, your Shakuras, your Daily Mounts, to go to all these games, because this is what we've wanted for so many years, to finally get to the league and then have it kind of taken away without us really even having a chance to appreciate those big occasions. That's the bit I think that hurts the most. Um, it probably would have been an easier pill to swallow had we had a full season, had we been able to have the fans go to it. But again, look, you know, these are what ifs, had a bins, and, and, and such. You know, you do what you have to do. This is the season, this is how it's ended, and, and you know, we go again. What are your thoughts on the recruitment generally at the start of the season rather than hindsight? What did you think at the start of the season with the signs you've made? Um, yeah, I. I for the most part, I thought they looked good. I mean, like as you said, you know, in hindsight, they can they can kind of bite you. I mean, you look at a player like Carl Carl Shepherd, who is notable for being a really, really, really good player um, uh, in previous seasons, and I, for one, was was, was happy with that sign, and it, it probably ca- it, it it didn't work out. Um, but I can't argue too much. Again, we have to appreciate it's, it, it. You know, although Shells have a new owner, we were still battling Finn Harps between us and ourselves to have, you know, who has the lowest budget in the league. And I think people forget that. A lot of a lot of the clubs will see Shelburne and kind of know them of, you know, because we have, you know, 13 league titles, whatever else. And and it's great that the, the club has that kind of history and has that bigger name kind of behind it. But the reality is where, you know, the money isn't isn't great and you know we have to spend wisely um some worked out some didn't and it, it is what it is yeah I, th- I think the one that stood out for me and it did work out was gary deegan when i seen that sign and yeah um, you know he reached the levels that we expected him to reach to be honest sydney in fairness yeah it, it, we kind of spoke about him in in the previous video with the um with the 11 that um you know he's an old-fashioned player and um but he he galvanised a lot of players, and he was, he, like you said, he's I think he's our second top goal scorer. Um, scored an absolute banger against Dundalk. Um, uh, you know, and he he was one of these players, and you saw him every week. You you would see him like grab and like Fernandez or whoever else by the jersey, and you know, you know grab them by the scruff of the neck, and kind of be like, look, this is how we play. Don't let that player pass you one more time. X, Y, and Z. You know, and he was, it, it worked. Did it work kind of in the, the games out the fans? Not as much, um, but I think there's definitely other factors there. But if you're talking about the you know the, the few players that, that did do well in the season, I think Gary Deegan is amongst them, certainly. Yeah. Who would you say are the best three performance, performance this season for Shelburne, in your view? Yeah. Um, Gary Deegan would be there, I'd say, kind of maybe my, my third place. Um, 
for the reasons already kind of mentioned, you know, his his work ethic, also getting a, getting a few goals. Um, I would then probably in second, I'd say Ryan Brennan. Um, I think his four goals, I think, led us to seven points or something like that. Um, so, yeah, important. Yeah. They were all goals that turned into points, you know. As uh, so he was, he was instrumental, and and he kind of really came into his own, I think, in this season because. If I think back, while he did well, I think in the first division the year prior, I, I he he didn't do as well as I think he's done this year in the Premier. Certainly not being as instrumental. So uh, he he's done great. I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping now. I, I think he's staying. Um, I would absolutely like him to stay. Um, I I would take him certainly. Um, and then number one, it would be Georgie Poynton. Um, I think a person who isn't really native to the to the right back role, and I think he was absolutely brilliant probably the best right back i've seen Chelt have in, in in a long time um he he was so fast so quick on the ball great at defense and great at turning defense into attack very very quickly um you know uh, his crossing ability was also very very good so um yeah absolutely and when when it comes to kind of who was your player of the season for the fans player of the season you know georgie will will definitely get uh, get my um, get my vote. I hope he stays. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. I think he's he's definitely good enough to to uh, for for Premier Division level. Um, I haven't heard anything yet, but um, if if we if we kept him, I think that is a is a, is a is a win. Um, like you wouldn't believe. But I'm not gonna uh, hold my breath. You never know. What most memorable game this season, Ian. Which 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 game was your kind of favorite? Ch- obviously a win, Leo. Which game was your favorite, basically? Um, <laughs> probably the, the the first game of the season. It, it has to be one of the ones with the fans for obvious reasons because the other ones they they do feel like training sessions. Um, you know. Um, but the, the the first game of the season, there was there was such a big like we're here, we're back, and and Turner's Cross is such a fantastic um stadium. Um, you know, we went there. It was packed house. Our first game back in the Premier Division. Yeah, it wasn't an easy game. It was. It was. It was very close. And then to kind of get the get the winner um, at the end. So that was my probably my most memorable. We the fans went absolutely crazy. Um, it was great because um, I went with three of my friends and. Uh, we rented out a house, so we actually were staying in 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 Cork City Town, like um, for the night. Oh, it was it was it was brilliant. So we were we had a hell of a time during the game, and, and an even better time after it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, what games do you think? You know, when you look back in a season, and you might get relegated or stay up or whatever it is, and you say they were the key games, and that was a key game in us maybe going down. Yeah. Was there any game that you felt, from your point of view, that that one behind, let's say? Um, uh, was the one all with Finn Harps and particularly the one all with Cork both games that particularly the Cork one I think we peppered the goal out of it I it, it could have been 5 or 6 nil, um, and we both games we took the lead just could not find the second goal the cushion goal had one, had we found the cushion goal in one of them, it would have been enough points to kind of see us over the line. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely have to look at those too. I think Luke Byrne got a got a red, I think, in that one all with uh, with Finn Harps. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was a little uh, a little harsh on him. Um, if I, if I remember, he didn't really even make any contact. The ball kind of just came over the player and him and. Was it two yellows? I can't remember now. Uh, or did you just get straight red in that game? I think it was a straight red. He was he, red. he saw him as the last player, but I didn't really I think it out. was kind of played that way. Um, I could be wrong, but um, yeah, that was a bit harsh. And um, but yeah, definitely the court game. I mean, we had chance after chance after chance. I think Killer had had more than his fair share. Um, you know, but he always tries. He always tries. He gives everything. Um, so I think they're definitely the the. Either of those games have been the, the the killer. I think the killer in that game against Cork as well was the goal you gave away as well. Was... Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that that hurt. <laughs> like that, that just compounded it. If Cork had got a worldly or something at least, but it was just a cross by Darling and McCabe just reads it completely wrong. Uh, yeah, basically tries to catch it over his head. 
when the ball comes down to his chest, essentially, and he just drops yeah. it into there. There was a number of chances. I remember that game very well, and I did think I'd agree with you there. Um, I think Dobbs had a chance, and there were good chances. It wasn't just oh, they, they were good. They were there good. There were four good five clear cut chances Absolutely. that they Absolutely. should have scored at least, at the very least, one. Um, and that that was you're right. That was uh, that was a killer. And maybe you know the red card against Finn Harps. I'll be honest. I can't remember if I thought it was a red or not because I can't fully picture yeah. it. But it was key in the game and. Remember, that's against Harps, who finished ahead of you by a couple of points. So you're taking a point off them and gaining two if you win that match. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah, that that I think those two games, if I remember correctly, though now I'm thinking, to, am I actually misinterpreting the red card? Because it might have been different. But, um, um, no, no, I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Because uh, I was yeah. thinking it's the other one. It was the red he got against Sligo. Um, was it was the other one that I was unsure of, but no, I think I'm right with the one that came over the top and he was the last man, I think. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, no, that day hurt, and, and I know kind of uh, Killer had a few chances up front in the court game uh, which weren't taken, and you know I feel I feel I feel for Killer because he's um, look he's a proven goal scorer, but the difference the, the role he's playing in shells, it's it's a thankless role, it's a thankless Very job. Nice. Such an isolated job, yeah. and for the person that like, you're up there, the ball's being thumped to you. Here, try take that down, do something with it, and he does it so well. You know, like I think, like I said, I think he finished with, with one or two goals. But if I think back to the amount of games, particularly like the game against um, Rovers, the the nil all at, at Tallis Stadium, his hold up play is, is absolutely brilliant. And like this is stuff you might not see in like a highlight reel or things you you chat about in the pub after. Look at oh, look at that amazing, you know chest down you know it doesn't really get that but he deserves credit for the role he was he's asked to do if he was asked to do it you know a, a more kind of sit in front of the box and you have another player that does that role well then he'd probably be on the the the, the goal scoring count a, a lot more but you know i, I feel for him i think he, he's the type of player that needs someone around them to be honest because he's, he's yeah. not he's no pace so a lot of the time you know it's he gets in behind, but he hasn't got the pace getting behind. So I'd imagine the defenders think, well, look, we can leave space here because, you know, that's not his game. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult role for a striker. I mean, I've seen Georgie Kelly for Pats this season. Very similar in that way as well. And in Kilduff's defence, I don't think the wingers at Shelburne have, apart from Fernandez occasionally, I don't think Shelburne's wingers have really lived up to maybe some of the expectations some people may have had going into the season. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to agree. I mean, like we had Jazz Cabia. That that's a that's a story in its own right. Whatever happened there, you know, I I don't even know. Um, but certainly Fernandez, and he and he was he was so good in the first division. And it, it's one of these players where he was so good at taking taking defenders on time and time again in the first division. But his success rate in doing that in the Premier Division, which he, I mean, he definitely had a few good games. Oh, yeah. But you could definitely see his uh, ability to take players on. He found it so much harder in the in in the in the Premier Division. But look, he's young. He's absolutely brilliant. I'm delighted he's still at Shells, and I actually think because he's he, he's only going to get better. And I think he could be one of the one of the top players, or one of the most influential players in our push for promotion. You know, um. So I I think I'm happy that he, you know he had re-signed. I think at the start of the season, started the the current uh, the season just finished. So he was he was always kind of on for next season. So um, I'm I'm delighted that, that he'll be there, and I think he'll he'll go back to 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 being a nightmare uh, for uh, defenses in the first division. I think he'll help his career as well to actually have yeah. a couple of seasons because I don't know when players start going to club to club to club year after year after year. I don't especially young players it doesn't help their development at all. So he's a typical um, a byline kind of style, old yeah. fashioned winger as well, isn't he? Um, and his crosses, in fairness, have been good at that. You're right though; he has been the best of them. Kabia has struggled a bit. Rooney has been up and down as well, hasn't he? A little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. And obviously Shepard coming in. I don't think Shepard has worked at all. I don't think he fits to what they're trying to do. If I'm honest with you, anyway. No, I, I, I the, you know, look, nothing against Shepard himself. Like he has, he has a career to certainly be proud of. There's no question of that. Um, but it, it, it did not click at all. Um, this year, um, he hasn't registered a goal. He hasn't registered an assist. And he was certainly there to to create goals, and and he certainly had enough chances to cross balls in to to you know and you know to 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 get on that you know look he he tried and and you know you know that that that's one side of it but you know I think his only notable thing was 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 that red card against Finn Harps. Aside from that, I can't think of um, anything that really kind of kind of kind of stood out like. 
I, I'm not sure if he's still with Chelsea. I don't, I'm not sure was he offered a two year or one year. So I don't know where he stands. We're currently getting um, contract news by the daily. It might even come out after this video. Who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. But um, I don't think he fits the style. Um, and it, it didn't pay off. And he definitely had enough chances to to to, to prove himself. Um, and it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. I definitely take his pass as best anyway, though. That's that's yeah. the thing with him. Even last season at Cork, he was the one sign the Chevrolet made. I, I kind of said to myself, look, I can see why they're doing it, but I'm not so sure about it. Um, fortunately for you, it proved to be the case that he just, at Cork his last season as well, he just, he looked like a player pass as best, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Ian, just before we go, we'll end on a positive. If you could take the biggest positive of the season uh, regarding Shelburne, what, what, would, what would you take, basically? I suppose I would take how the club is at the moment. Like, you know, when we went down the first, uh, when we went down six or seven years ago, um, you know, when you think of when we went up at that time, that even going up at that time, Shelburne weren't in a great position. Money was still really, really bad. It was, it was, it was great that we went up, but it was very much premature. We weren't in a situation to make it sustainable. Now, I did think this time we went up, we had enough to kind of make it sustainable. We didn't, but I definitely think even still that we're going down, we're going to give it a great effort. The club is still in a good situation from the background, you know. People might have lost a little bit of faith in Morris, but I still think we've got to give him more time. I still think he's a good manager and, you know, I still think he could be the guy to kind of take us take us back up. So I think the positive is how the club is situated, how it's being run, you know, not in debt. Things are going on well. Currently, the 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 Dublin County Council are redoing the entire pitch at Tolka doing kind of I think it's a bit of a I wouldn't I don't know if it's quite the word is, is a hybrid it's it, it's not quite that but they're they're doing stuff to underlay to kind of help the help it drain a lot better and so it's just that that's it and I also think the fans were huge this season and they absolutely need to give credit you know you you saw them out with their flares in the game uh, heading off to the game uh, at Waterford which subsequently turned out in a win and you saw them surrounding the pitch in their last training session before Longford you know, we've got good fans and I've, I've said it before we've got the thicker skin in the league the Shells fans we, you know, we've had some serious heartaches and heartbreaks um, over the years with Shells, and that's only in short term. I, I, you know, I'm not too old, and I can remember my fair well, you share. You remember of, the ups and downs, literally. I've, I've the whole ends of the spectrum. Yeah, you've seen everything. Yeah. I've seen it all. I've seen <laughs> us lose promotion at the last day of the season to Dundalk. I've seen us lose cup finals on penalties. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen us lose the long. I've seen all the, you know, the heartaches and heartbreaks, and as has all Shells fans. But we're still here. We still we still kind of fly the flag. We still represent, you know, and I credit has to go out to the fans. They've, they've done really, really, really well. And I hope to see, you know, big numbers next season because we said we were selling out Tolka um, at the start of this season. Obviously, might not get that because of the away fans, but, you know, if we keep the majority of the Shells fans, I'd, I'd be absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, I mean, that can help you push for promotion, definitely getting a big crowd. And, you know, as you say, Shells fans have done very well, actually, this season. The fact that I haven't been able to go to games, the flares, fantastic stuff. Unfortunately, against Longford the last day of the season, I won't say it didn't help, but I tell you what didn't help, I suppose, was the red card. That was the main thing in that match yeah. that didn't help. Because um, it's always the worst situation, because you say to yourself, if we had 11 on the pitch, would we have won? There's always that question, isn't there? Yeah. So for it to happen in that way, I suppose, was sickening, wasn't it, to be fair, I think, you know? Yeah, it, it was. And look, you can kind of understand the second jello. You know, we tried to stop the goal scoring opportunity. Penalty was missed. The first jello, I think there, was, there wasn't really much of a need. It was halfway up the pitch. And it's hard. And again, look, you know, it, it hurt the fans because it, it, it had such a big knock on effect. I personally think we probably would have had enough um, with 11 men. But look, Luke has re signed. He is an absolutely top player. He is absolutely a Premier Division level player. You know, discipline, he's had three three reds. Um, but 
that that comes. He's eager. He's young, and and he, he he'll learn with that, and he will he will. And I I've no doubt he will come better. I've no doubt he he might even be given the captain's armband next season. I don't know now for a fact, but he 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 could be that type of player that that's entrusted one of these players that sticks with us for for many years because this is now his third season that he's gonna he's gonna be with us. I would also say um. I was just thinking back to when we were saying kind of the three top players who uh, who were doing well this season. I uh, I didn't actually mention Sean Quinn, um, who I do think deserves credit. Um, probably the highest work rate I see in all season. He chases everything. Um, another player who was signed on for next season. He he's getting yeah, better. He's getting better year on year. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted that he's in the squad. Uh, I think he he's he truly plays for the jersey. Um, you know, he he really, really loves this club. He loves the fans and his work ethic, his ability to dribble and his pace, um, despite what FIFA say, um, he's really <laughs> fast. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think he, he definitely deserves a mention and he would be, I think, one of the most instrumental kind of for next season. Look, Ian, I think you've given Shelburne fans plenty of reasons to be optimistic in fairness. So thanks very much for coming on. Appreciate that, all right? No problem. No, it's, it's an absolute pleasure, Keith. And, and keep doing the videos. They're absolutely fantastic. You know, they're, they're really, really informative. And, you know, I love watching them all the time. So, yeah, so thanks again. Thanks very much, Ian. Appreciate that. See you now. Bye-bye.